Uh, thank you, Maxim, for the introduction. And I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's a great honor for me uh, to speak at uh, Professor Kashwala's uh, birthday conference. So the title of my talk is uh, The Frobenius Structure uh, Conjecture uh, in dimension two. Uh, it is joint work uh, with Sean Keo. So uh, let me first give the plan of my talk. First, I will ex uh, state uh, the Frobenius structure conjecture. Uh, of gross hacking and kill and then uh, I will state uh, the main results of the talk so the part I will explain uh, structure constants involved in the conjecture via non-Archimedean geometry And uh, fourth part, some finiteness uh, theorems. And the last part, uh, I will speak about uh, compactification uh, and extension. So let me s uh, start with uh, just a, a statement of the conjecture. Uh, statement of uh, the Frobenius uh, structure conjecture. Um, so here is the setup of the conjecture. Uh, we start with uh, Y. It is a connected uh, smooth projective uh, variety over complex numbers. And then uh, inside the Y, we have a divisor D in the anti-canonical class of Y is an effective SNC divisor. So we assume that uh, D has a zero stratum uh, containing a zero stratum. So let me uh, draw an example. Uh, we have a Y, uh, like two-dimensional example. Uh, we have a Y like this, and uh, D, uh, anti-canonical divisor, uh, inside containing a zero stratum, it's just uh, like a chain of uh, rational curves. Like this is an example of D. So zero stratum? Sorry? What do you mean zero? zero stratum is just uh, here, like a zero dimensional stratum point. So because D is a thing can be singular, so we uh, have stratification and we say there is a, a point inside. At least one. S and C, at least. Yes. And uh, we take a complement of D, uh, U uh, to be complement of D, uh, and uh, we call this. Complement is called uh, log Calabi Yau variety uh, with maximal boundary. So this is just a name. Maximal. Yeah. You assume that the device of a convention is reduced when you say simple normal costing. Yes. Yes. Uh, reduced. Yes. So uh, so this is uh, the geometric data. Uh, we start, and then uh, from this we can have a uh, uh, we consider B uh, is a, a dual uh, intersection uh, cone complex of D. 
So uh, it's just the uh, cone over the dual intersection complex. So in this case, uh, B, uh, B is simply this, like a fan. Uh, this is B. So in this case, B is just uh, the fan where uh, each ray corresponds to uh, irreducible components of D, and uh, each two-dimensional cone corresponds to the uh, zero strata. It's uh, very simple. Uh, yes, and uh, inside B, we have integer points, uh, Bz, just the integer points. And I just want to remark that integer points in B, uh, they can be thought of as uh, uh, divisorial valuations on the function field of Y. Uh, you can think, but uh, yes, so it's just a remark. So yes, and uh, then let me introduce uh, a ring R. R is uh, the ring generated by the monoid uh, uh, NEY, uh, where NEY is the monoid of uh, curves. NEY is just a uh, monoid of uh, curves. Uh, in Y, uh, modulo uh, numerical equivalence. So the usual, if you know NE, it's the usual NE. And uh, I define from now, uh, I introduce one last uh, uh, notation, A uh, to be a free uh, R module uh, generated uh, by VZ. So in other words, uh, A is just a direct sum of R over uh, BZ, and uh, let's denote the, uh, oh sorry, let's denote the basis to be theta P. So it's free R module generated by BZ, I write it as, it's just the direct sum of uh, that many copies of R. So this is just the basis, theta P. Yes, so uh, I hope uh, you are not yet confused. So I introduced uh, seven uh, notations. Um, the first three ju is just the geometric uh, data. Let's say this is a, a geometric data we start with. And then we have uh, two uh, B, uh, this uh, simple uh, combinatorial uh, scene. And uh, from this uh, geometric data and the combinatorial uh, data, we uh, define a two algebraic uh, data. Uh, one is uh, a ring R and a free R module A. So uh, from this uh, Gross and hacking kill, they observe uh, a natural uh, R linear map, R a uh, multilinear map, I denote uh, by this, from uh, A to the power N to A, uh, to R, sorry, to R uh, for every uh, N greater or equal to 2. So uh, they observe there exists a natural R multilinear map uh, given by uh, counting um, rational curves. in Y. So I will uh, tell you what is this R multilinear map uh, in five minutes. <laughs> no, just the R. No, really finite linear combination. No? Um, Oh, uh, let me assume, uh, that is a good question. Uh, let me assume uh, that D supports an ample, div uh, ample divisor. 
So maybe I don't write. Yes. Maybe I write. Uh, I assume, oh, maybe, uh, so let me assume, yes, thanks for Maxim's question. So we assume uh, u is affine. Uh, now there is uh, no trouble uh, here. So uh, they observe there is a natural R multilinear map uh, given by counting some rational curve uh, in Y. So uh, I will tell you what, what's this map, but let me first state their conjecture. Uh, then they conjecture uh, uh, the following. So first, uh, they say that uh, this R multilinear map is non-degenerate. Is uh, non-degenerate. And then uh, they say that uh, there exists a unique uh, commutative uh, R algebra structure on A uh, such that uh, first, um, the unit uh, for the R algebra structure equals just uh, uh, so such that unit uh, equals uh, this base theta zero, and uh, we have and it's compatible uh, with the multilinear map, which is uh, uh, if I take product a one to a n. And I take a trace, which means uh, the coefficient before theta zero. This is given by uh, the multilinear map. And the third part of the conjecture is that uh, uh, spec R, uh, spec A to spec R, this uh, restricted. to uh, the torus associated to the Picard group of Y. Uh, the torus associated to the Picard group of Y uh, lives in spec R by uh, definition. And if we restrict uh, this map to this uh, torus, uh, then uh, this is a family uh, of affine log Calabi-Yau varieties. Uh, with maximum boundary also, <coughs> and maximum uh, boundary. And uh, this family is called a uh, mirror family, uh, mirror family of U. So uh, let me just uh, recapitulate. Uh, we start with some uh, log Calabi variety, which is a complement of some divisor uh, in Y. And uh, from this, we build uh, like a, a ring and a module. And then uh, by counting some rational curves, gross, hack, and keel, they defined a multilinear map uh, on this module. And then they conjecture that uh, uh, this multilinear map uh, is actually has some underlying Frobenius uh, algebra structure uh, inside, and that algebra structure makes this uh, algebra into a, a, again a family of uh, Calabi log Calabi varieties. So, uh, what is trace that you wrote in the formula? Uh, trace is just uh, the coefficient. Uh, sorry. Leave, leave a trace on the blackboard. <laughs> no, no, I mean. Oh, you mean I write the explanation? No, no, tra tra form of trace is equal coefficients. It's just the coefficient, to be, uh, coefficient before theta zero. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so the conjecture is really about, uh, although it's phrased in terms of this multilinear map, it's really about uh, rational curves the geometry of rational curves uh, in Y. So let me explain now uh, how this 
multilinear map is defined. So P P coin is the same thing as the rotary. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, it's dual. It's uh, Pick one neuron savory. Uh, here, yes, in this case, uh, they are the same. Mm -hmm. Modulo, yeah, they are the same. In, yes. Yes. Uh, so now let me define this uh, multilinear map. Um, so given. Mm, n points p1 to pn in uh, the integer points uh, in b and uh, beta curve class in the uh, monoid of curves n e of y uh, we make some blow up called a uh, toric blow up uh, pi from y tilde d tilde to yd, uh, which is just uh, blow up some strata uh, in y. Uh, this is called the toric blow up. Like in this two-dimensional case, the only thing we do is just blow up this uh, zero-dimensional, zero strata, blow up some points. So we make a toric blow up such that uh, uh, each pi uh, has a divisorial center. Ah, uh, yes. A divisorial center, uh, let's denote it dpi uh, in d tilde. So uh, it's really easy. We have, uh, like, after blow up, uh, we have many, many components. And now we assume that uh, uh, pi has divisorial center on some components. For example, this is dp1, this is uh, dp2, uh, this is uh, dp3. Uh, because I said that integer points correspond to uh, some valuation, divisorial valuation. Yes. So um, ah, now we define uh, let uh, C uh, P1 to Pn uh, beta be uh, the number of uh, rational curves uh, in this space uh, that looks like uh, this. So we just let this to be the number of rational curves uh, that touches P1, P2, DP1, DP2, DP3, and also of this curve class uh, beta. So to make it precise, I say that uh, that counts a uh, map from P1 with n plus 1 marked points. To y, such that uh, uh, satisfying uh, the following condition. Uh, first, uh, we want uh, uh, it touches we want the point uh, pi touches dpi with some multiplicity, which means that we want pre-image of dpi is mi times uh, uh, pi, where uh, mi is the multiplicity of uh, big pi. So where big pi equals mi times uh, the primitive vector. I just wanted to, to touch with the multiplicity. And then uh, I want a curve class uh, to be beta. So uh, essentially, uh, that's the condition we want to put uh, on the curve we want to count. But uh, we don't get a finite count uh, at this stage. So we must uh, add some extra uh, condition just in order to 
uh, get some get a finite number. So we also assume that the domain uh, has the domain uh, curve has fixed uh, general uh, modulus and uh, fr uh, equals a fixed uh, general uh, point uh, y inside y tilde. So I just uh, add that condition uh, to be more rigid. So uh, then one can show uh, in the proposition that uh, this set uh, is a finite set. It's finite. So uh, the number that we want to count uh, is well defined. And we define our multilinear map just by this number. So the multilinear map um, from a to the power n to r, it's just given by, uh, it sends the basis theta p1 to theta pn to uh, the sum over since r is the ring generated by curves. So just the sum over uh, curves of this number. Uh, I denote z to the power beta to be basis of this r, basis of r. So this is the definition of the multilinear map. Supposed to be non-negative integers. Yes, this is just a finite set, and uh, this number is just uh, the cardinality of the set, so it's a non-negative integer. So I hope now this conjecture is uh, precise. Um, so the multiplicity is supposed to be one for some. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, as a modular space, this set? Yeah, the, it's just a reduced scheme, uh, zero dimension. Yes. So, yeah. Why does it find it? So, oh, maximum question. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Why is this sum finite? Because uh, I added the assumption that u is a fine. Yeah. In this case, uh, the boundary d will support an ample divisor. And uh, using that ample divisor, uh, we see that uh, if, because we see that here the intersection of the curve with the boundary is fixed. Mm -hmm. So when the boundary supports an ample divisor, that fixed intersection number means there are only finitely curved class. Yeah. So, so small p1 to small p n are, are given or? They are uh, marked points on the rational curve. So you give it? Yes. Not on target. Not on target. Uh -huh. No. So you, so the, that is, so you choose some points already? In the domain. Yeah. In the domain. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I ask that point to go to the divisor. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. So this sum is also finite. And yeah, so I just uh, uh, summarize that uh, uh, we count some rational curves in our y, or some blow up of y. And uh, uh, that count is a really naive count. And uh, using the naive count, we define a multilinear map. Then the conjecture says that the count satisfies uh, mysterious properties. Uh, especially it gives back again some kind of family of log B varieties. Okay, uh, so mm, you have a question? Uh, yes, so uh, the main result uh, of the talk is that uh, uh, the following theorem 
uh, that uh, the conjecture holds uh, in dimension two. Uh, so let me explain uh, the idea of the proof. Um, so we will construct uh, this uh, Frobenius algebra structure uh, by uh, counting some other things, which means uh, we construct uh, the structure constants for the algebra uh, of A uh, by counting uh, so-called uh, non-Archimedean uh, holomorphic disks Uh, using uh, some techniques I developed uh, uh, in my thesis, uh, which was uh, under direction of uh, Maxime. Uh, So uh, let me explain uh, how we uh, get the structure constants again uh, by some enumerative geometry. So for uh, P1 to Pn uh, in Bz, uh, we want to figure out uh, what is the product So we want to know uh, how to multiply uh, things uh, in A, because A was uh, defined as an R module, and we want to uh, define a multiplication. So we want to know what's the product. And since the product is an element uh, in A, and A is a free R module uh, generated by BZ, so I can write uh, this element as some uh, over uh, the basis. And uh, so the coefficient before the basis is the element in R. Uh, now, uh, since R is uh, uh, generated by the monoid of curves, I can write an element in R uh, as uh, sum over its basis, which is the monoid. S and then uh, the basis we denoted by z to the power gamma. z is just a symbol. So, and then the coefficient before, we write it as p1 to pn uh, q gamma. So uh, this formula is nothing, just uh, uh, write, write it out. And our goal uh, is to define uh, this uh, number, mu uh, p1 to pn uh, q uh, gamma using uh, non-Archimedean geometry. So uh, I'll not I explain how to get this number. Um, so uh, since we want to use some non-Archimedean geometry, uh, we uh, uh, we use a non-Archimedean field, the field of uh, Laurent formal Laurent series. Uh, it is uh, non-Archimedean because we have the absolute value given by valuation of t. And then I take uh, uk 
to be base change uh, from complex number to the uh, to our field k, and uh, just as in complex geometry, uh, we can analytify uh, this k variety and get an analytic space uh, over k. So uh, we get a k analytic space. Um, we use the approach of uh, Berkovich here uh, for the analytification. So, so uh, roughly, uh, the analytic space is just uh, the points. They are just uh, some kind of valuations on a ring of functions. So we have a natural embedding from B to uh, the analytic space. Uh, B was our combinatorial thing, the dual intersection com com complex. And uh, that are some valuations. So it's we can embed. And uh, moreover, uh, we have retraction uh, from uh, tau, from this analytic space to B, a continuous map. So um, now uh, that's the setup we use of non-Archimedean geometry. And now I just uh, say that uh, uh, we define this structure constant mu p1 to pn uh, q gamma. They just uh, uh, count uh, holomorphic uh, disks in uh, uh, I do the same base change and uh, analytification to y or y tilde. They are almost the same, uh, which looks like this, which looks like, uh, so we have uh, um, dp1, uh, dp2, dp3. Let's just uh, do two, uh, two. And uh, we count uh, holomorphic uh, disks, which looks like uh, this. So it uh, touches dp1 and uh, dp2, and uh, then uh, yeah, let me give the uh, precise, and of course it has a curve class gamma, and uh, let me give a precise meaning of what I mean by counting uh, such uh, disks. It just means we count uh, maps from a disk. Uh, delta is uh, just a closed unit disk. Disk. Uh, with uh, n plus one marked points, uh, p1 to pn to r on the disk, and a map from this pointed disk to our analytic space, uh, such that uh, same conditions, almost the same. Uh, first, I want the touch uh, these uh, these divisors, so so I at marked points p1, p2. So I want uh, a free image of dpi equals uh, touches, just uh, touch the divisor with some multiplicity. First the condition. And the second the condition, um, so uh, class, curve class uh, is gamma. And then, uh, what does it mean? It's kind of surface is boundary. What does it mean? That's the time plus and second homology. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, you know, you want to know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I tell you later. Yes, uh, I I will explain it later because it will be a digression to explain. Uh, let me just say it makes sense. Uh, 
curve class equals gamma. Uh, yes, and for other conditions, uh, uh, we will use this uh, rejection map to put more conditions. So uh, we have a, a rejection map uh, from this. Uh, to B, um, and uh, so in B, we have uh, this origin, uh, B I draw there, it's just uh, this uh, fan. So uh, we have uh, this array in the direction of uh, P1. and another array in the direction of uh, P2, and array in the direction of Q. So uh, we ask uh, that uh, first, maybe I first say, first I want the boundary uh, under the retraction map goes, goes to somewhere. So I want uh, the boundary Uh, go to some uh, fixed point uh, B near uh, the ray OQ. Uh, so it just means that uh, I fix uh, some point B near the ray OQ, and I want the boundary uh, goes there. And then uh, I also ask that uh, if I take a neighborhood of the boundary and under the retraction map, uh, then it is just uh, some uh, segment uh, starting from B uh, in the direction of Q. So I ask uh, a neighborhood of the boundary uh, goes to something in the direction of Q. Yes, so that's almost uh, the only thing we fix, and, uh, uh, but uh, there are too many, still too many. So in order to get, uh, try to get some finite count, we still need to just uh, fix some extra condition, which is uh, uh, domain has fixed uh, general uh, modulus and uh, f of r uh, is a fixed general point equals a fixed uh, general point. So uh, we say that uh, we let this structure, we define this structure constant just be counting uh, this kind of thing, satisfying this condition. Uh, but, uh, um, but unfortunately, it's not as easy as in the previous case. We have this proposition that we get a finite count. So here, uh, we have a, a trouble uh, trouble one is that uh, if we try to count these things, uh, the space of all uh, such uh, disks uh, is infinite dimensional. Because we can vary, still vary many parameters. So uh, in order to get a finite count, uh, we just uh, use a solution I did in my thesis, uh, is to impose an extra condition on the boundary, which I call uh, a regularity condition. A condition uh, on the boundary. So by this, I mean, um, 
So we have uh, our disk. And uh, since it's in analytic geometry, uh, we can do analytic continuation. We can try to do analytic continuation at the boundary. And uh, by regular uh, regularity condition on the boundary, I just mean that uh, uh, when we do analytic continuation at the boundary, uh, it should uh, extend uh, straight. So what I mean is that uh, by analytic uh, continuation, analytic uh, continuation at the boundary, uh, our disk uh, extend extends uh, all straight. So, uh, more precisely, it means that. Uh, its image in B uh, by our retraction map tau uh, is straight uh, with respect to the so-called uh, integral affine structure uh, on B. So now, uh, good news is that uh, theorem 2 is that uh, the space of holomorphic disks satisfying all these conditions, the space of uh, holomorphic uh, disks satisfying uh, all the conditions star uh, plus a regular boundary uh, boundary, this uh, is a finite set now. Yes, it's really a finite set. So since it's a finite set, uh, we can just uh, count uh, its cardinality and uh, we get a number. And we define this number uh, to be our structure constant. Uh, however, uh, there is now another trouble, uh, trouble two, uh, is that uh, when we extend uh, our disk uh, at the boundary, uh, we have some ambiguity. It's that uh, extending uh, straight on the left uh, of this uh, OQ uh, may, may be different, uh, may differ uh, from uh, extending uh, straight on the right of OQ. Uh, it's just uh, the meaning of uh, straight on the left and the meaning of straight on the right. Uh, they are a priori different. So uh, let me just uh, uh, draw a picture. So for example, if this extension uh, is straight seen as on the left of OQ, it might not be straight seen as on the right of OQ. If we extend the straight on the right of OQ, it may uh, extend like this, for example. It's just because integral affine structure. It may, like on the left, it may go like this. On the right, it may go somewhere, else, some other way. So uh, left and the right, they are different. So this says a priori that our count uh, depends on the choice of uh, whether we pick B on the left or pick B on the right. So uh, yes. So uh, fortunately, they are the same. Uh, 
But, uh, the way uh, we can prove uh, that they are the same is that uh, we define uh, yet another uh, regularity condition uh, for the boundary uh, using some, uh, not using this, but uh, using some toric model. Uh, so I don't have time to explain. I just uh, say that uh, counts uh, using uh, left uh, regularity condition uh, equals uh, counts using another regularity condition called toric regularity condition equals counts using right regularity condition. So, uh, so corollary is that uh, our structure constants uh, mu uh, is well defined. So yes. So now uh, we define the, the numbers mu. They are the structure constants. They are supposed to be the structure constants of the algebra. Uh, uh, then, so which means that now we know what is this product. Uh, this product of elements in A. And uh, now a natural question is uh, whether uh, this uh, product, uh, this multiplication, is uh, commutative and uh, associative. So uh, commutativity is uh, easy, just uh, follows from the construction. But uh, associativity is uh, more difficult, which is a theorem. Uh, just like this, that uh, uh, this multiplication is associative. Yes, so uh, that's the theorems I want to explain just uh, for the structure constants. And now I go to uh, the next uh, section, uh, which I called uh, finiteness theorems. So. Uh, uh, as uh, Maxim and uh, Professor Kashwala already asked about uh, finiteness, and now uh, we have uh, another question about finiteness, which is uh, whether uh, these two uh, sums they are finite. Uh, because if they are not finite, they are not really structure constants. Uh, they, it's not an algebra, then. It's some formal algebra. So uh, a natural question is, are uh, the two sums in uh, this uh, equation uh, finite? So uh, this finiteness is, uh, follows, it's a bit more complicated than that finiteness, but uh, it is still true. It's still true. So uh, we can prove, which I call uh, finiteness uh, part one, is that uh, uh, the two sums, both sums are finite sums. are finite. So for this, we use some uh, convexity property uh, of, uh, of the image of this, uh, <coughs> this uh, disk. So in this case, the image is uh, something that looks like this. So we use some convexity property of these uh, green uh, trees. And, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, so we get a finite sum and we get an algebra. Um, then there, 
second theorem of second finiteness theorem, which is uh, important, uh, is that uh, a so the first finiteness just uh, says that we get a <coughs> algebra, commutative associative algebra, and the second finiteness says that a is a finitely generated. R algebra. So for the second finiteness, uh, one has to use some more structure uh, on A that maybe I don't have time to explain. But uh, we really have uh, two, uh, two finiteness results, and uh, <coughs> it shows that the algebra structure we get uh, from uh, counting this kind of uh, Disks, they are reasonable. OK, and the uh, uh, last uh, section, uh, compactification uh, and extension. So uh, we have constructed, uh, so until now we get uh, this uh, reasonable A. So we have since A is uh, reasonable, uh, we can take a spec uh, of A and uh, uh, it goes to spec of R. And now we want to say more about uh, this algebra A. So uh, in order to say more about uh, more information, because in the conjecture it says that uh, uh, it says that uh, this uh, family uh, defined by this counting uh, curves, it's really uh, nice. Like the fibers, they are log Calabi-Yau varieties. But until now, we have no idea uh, what are the fibers uh, of, like, what is this family? After all the effort, uh, all the, since we know it's just A is a finitely generated R algebra. So in order to uh, obtain more information, about spec A, uh, we need to compactify uh, the fibers uh, of this map and as well as to extend uh, this family to a bigger base. So we need to do two things. First is uh, compactify uh, the fibers, uh, which means uh, we compactify uh, spec A into some x such that uh, this is uh, proper. So uh, the way we compactify, oh, compactify, uh, the way we compactify the fibers is again to define this. Uh, uh, compactify the thing uh, by some uh, by something like this, but we no longer take a spec, uh, we take a proj. So we compactify the fibers. And uh, after compactifying uh, the fibers, uh, we can extend. Uh, now we can extend the base. Um, maybe I cannot explain uh, how to extend the base, but uh, let me just uh, say that uh, uh, the base uh, is spec R, and this, uh, just uh, since uh, Ne, the cone of curves, is due to the uh, nef cone, so this can be seen as uh, the toric variety associated spec of R is just the toric variety associated to the uh, nef cone of Y. And uh, that thing is naturally embedded uh, into the toric variety associated to uh, something called the Mori fan uh, of Y. So the nef cone is just a cone in a bigger fan called Mori fan, and uh, our family X can also be extended. 
this extension uh, exists. So maybe I put it as a theorem that uh, this extension uh, exists. So uh, using this uh, compactification of the fiber and uh, the existence of the extension, uh, we can uh, deduce the final theorem uh, about the property of this uh, spec A. So we show that, uh, so this family, let me denote it again by uh, curly X. So one can prove uh, we have curly X and uh, so this is also, uh, we have a, a pair since it's is this is just the part of the infinity. So uh, final theorem, uh, let me state, is uh, first uh, this family, uh, it is, so first it is a flat uh, projective family of surfaces uh, with a veil divisor and uh, second uh, with veil divisor z maybe with veil divisor and then uh, this z the family of z uh, z uh, over the base base is just a trivial family of uh, a cycle of rational curves uh, just as what we started uh, in the beginning. And the third one show one we can show that uh, the fibers over uh, the fibers of the family they are uh, semi log canonical and uh, if we take uh, uh, anti canonical class plus z it's uh, trivial it's again the same as we started with D is uh, in the anti-canonical class. So last, uh, the fibers uh, over the pick, uh, Picard torus, this is uh, better. It is uh, log-canonical and, uh, and uh, the complement Uh, the complement uh, of Z uh, is an affine uh, canonical uh, log Calabria surface. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. And two questions and remarks. Yeah. Uh, yes. Why is more or less P2, isn't it? Uh, y is more or less some blow up of P2. P2 yeah. Yes. So, I mean, suppose Y is P2, then what is X? Uh, it's uh, again the same in this case. Is there anything simple? I mean, explicit? Yes. Uh, all the computation here uh, can be done explicitly. Uh, I mean, X is also P2, if Y is P2. Actu actually, uh, if Y is P2, uh, X is always over some uh, bigger base. X is a family. So, uh, if Y is P, if Y is P2, uh, then X is a family over the just. Uh,
Uh, yeah, I, I think it's still P, P2. Mm -hmm. uh, one has to check. Uh, but the uh, Toric case is not a uh, uh, is not an interesting case for this uh, uh, question. Uh, because well, what, is it, what is an interesting case? Interesting case, they are uh, blow up of uh, toric varieties. Bec uh, why I say toric case is not an interesting case? Because in the toric case, uh, like all these uh, numbers that uh, we can count, uh, they are just uh, mm, uh, so it's this uh, multiplication we get, it's like in again in the torus just a monomial like multiplication of the mon monomials i mean there are no uh, interesting sums mm. always like just one term so the more interesting case are uh, non toric and uh, uh, everything can be computed explicitly using the wall crossing formula of uh, maxim and yeah I have a question. How you understand that these surfaces are smooth? Just because it's... Uh, it's not a smooth. It's a canonical. Ah, okay. So, ah, so it's... Uh, it's less smooth. But uh, they, they are really non-smooth things. Yes. And... Uh, yeah, it's not a smooth. I see. It's I a see. Uh, this is uh, the best I one can get. And uh, you get it in real examples. Yeah, you get some... Uh, Singularities. Singularities. Yes. Oh, oh but uh, from uh, what uh, the counts I yeah. described, yeah. Uh, we can see that actually we don't need to assume y to be smooth. Yeah. So it's a symmetric, uh, the picture. Ah, I see. Because the counts, we uh, get a finite set mm -hmm. and uh, we can uh, avoid the singularities of y. Okay, other questions? Thanks, the speaker, and thank you.